All right. Well, welcome to our first Twitch, everyone. Uh, my name's Chris Burns, and my production assistant here and co-owner of the studio, <laughs> Bob Fox, is to my right. So uh, you might hear him talking over this. And this is our weekly, hopefully, bi-weekly, bi -weekly, <laughs> depending on uh, how busy we are, uh, look into our video game we're working on called Blood which is a traditionally animated top-down adventure that follows the exploits of a vampire hunter called Becky, a seventh grade girl with a lot of attitude and a lot of skill in the fighting department. So we're going to show you how we set things up here. And at any time, if you have any questions, it doesn't even have to be about blood. If it's just about animation, let me know. I'll try my best to answer it, and we'll take it from there. So. We're setting all these things up as sprite sheets for our programmer, who you might see in the viewer count as the future man, Cody Greenhelch. And we also have another programmer, very talented guy by Andrew Tavis, and our writer, Greg Lane. And they might be the only three viewers right now, so, <laughs> if, so let us know if that's uh, going to be a problem. And let me show you how we set things up for Cody, Andrew, and Greg. So, here we have our protagonist, Becky, and all the animation you'll see. Hey, I know Lawrence Bass. Hey, uh, an SVA graduate, everyone. <laughs> Your camera is super bright right now. Yeah. How do you know it's not my aura? So, no, we don't know how to fix that. So, uh, please bear with us on that. And maybe next time the sun won't be directly in my eyes well, either. Just choose a different time of day. <laughs> 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 I don't get it. All right, let's turn, turn down that brightness here. So, all right. How you doing, Lawrence? I haven't talked to you since uh, we talked over the email. Good to hear from you again. So anyway, I was just showing everyone uh, these Becky sprites we're working on. Uh, now, if you're if you're lucky enough to play Blood over Magfest over the weekend, uh, you got to see all this in action. But for the majority of you who didn't, this is sort of how we set it up. Uh, each one of these characters right here has embedded animation in it. Uh, and what Cody and Andrew do is take these and we can magically move it around right now with an Xbox controller. And we have about a 20 minute demo uh, if you breeze through it. And for most of the people around 40 minutes. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna just press play. Hopefully you guys can see this. And you can see all the work for just this one little character we're doing. All the damage, miscellaneous. These, of course, are the attacks. Each angle. We're doing top-down adventure, so we're really torturing ourselves with how many times we have to animate something the same way, just at a different angle. And each one of these has traditional animation throughout. Right here, we want to keep the whole thing lively. So every time you see a scene, it feels like a cartoon that's moving around, and we didn't really make it want to make it feel like a traditional game in that respect. So you can see right here, we kind of put a line boil on her, just to keep things even when you let go of the controller moving for her. And that's just the traceback for all you animators out there that might wonder how we might have did that. Now what we have to do is what we did with the three-quarter one right here is they add animation to all this thing, so it's not just a line boil, but something that keeps it lively the whole time. We have a kind of speculating around, and everything we do has to be a loop, uh, just for animation's sake, so it doesn't look like it cuts off at any point. So each one of these, we got the idle work here. We got the walk animation here, run. If you're really cruising and you let go, she has a stop animation. And this is the push. And we'll uh, have to eventually add a pull when we get some more um, uh, mystery and puzzle kind of stuff going on. Oh. No, you're, n you're not too late. So, we are. and <laughs> oh, we're, we are, yes. <laughs> we uh, just had a phone call that cut, came at the wrong time, so we had to cut off live. 
the power of running a business. So anyway, what we're going to do today is make uh, Becky's father figure, or dad in fact, uh, do some animation here. We're just starting him, because at the beginning of the um, game, you're going to eventually meet your father, and he's going to lay in some of the story. So I'm going to show some of that for you right now. Oh, this is uh, some of the characters you'll run into later, too. All these are animated, too. It's running a little slow, but each one has embedded animation. There's a section of it where you're on a school bus. You can talk to about five of these characters, but eventually we're going to have 27 just students in her school. So, uh, so that is going to be interesting, getting all that done. I'll show you some of that, too. In fact, why not? So we got some sleeping characters on the bus. I know some of you, I know I was one of the, you had history of animation. I was doing this all the time, just sleeping on the floor. Don't tell Howard Beckerman. Uh, we got some kids talking. So what, what really we wanted to do is every scene you walk into or every level, it should feel like you're playing a cartoon. I think uh, Cuphead did an amazing job of the running gun game, making it feel like a 1930s rubber hose epic. What we're trying to do is bring back that kind of 90s, uh, I guess late 90s, Cartoon Network, Hanna-Barbera kind of look, uh, Cal Arts AF, as we were told a few times at MAGFest, uh, trying to get that looking like you could play a game. And we're going to do it top down, not side scrolling, like they did in Cuphead. We're, so we're gonna have a few we're adults. We're talking about Cal Arts because everything that's referred to Cal Arts is all made in SVA, so we don't quite get it. Yeah, no, uh, Ian and SVA, Ian uh, Jones, uh, OK KO creator, SVA, Rebecca Sugar, SVA alumni. Uh, but I guess once you go to uh, California, you just adopt the nearest school. <laughs> so right now we're gonna, and it's Friday, so we're gonna have a few drinks too because. Uh, when you own the studio, you can't get fired. So we got uh, another playful character here. He's one of the more talkative characters. We call him Terrell, and he's loosely based off a roommate, the programmer Bob and myself used to have. And I doubt he's here, but but eh, well, just leave that. Let, let's leave that to be a secret to him too. Got some of these characters. You see, and then he starts chatting. And you'll see, like each section of this, we kind of, I kind of laid out a scene where they're kind of talking to each other. Now these aren't exactly interactive right now, but that is soon to change. So you see, then he starts talking, we got this redhead listening, and all that stuff. And we kind of uh, delve into a lot of um, different cliques in the group. We got the punk kids here, we got the nerd here, the bully here. Uh, the people who spread rumors, and the quirky bus driver. And this is Becky's best friend and confidant, Corey. And he is a science nerd who helps Becky on her journey. God, I wish I was out of the show. Oh, buddy. <clears throat> Kicking a man while he's down. Don't name any later. Yeah, All right. Very messy. Oh no no! You'll see that when it's when it's just two of us doing all the visuals, we just have to please each other. So right now, let's get to the adults. Enough of this kid stuff. So we are gonna start in all likelihood. Becky waking up in her house, and she's gonna reach out to her father, who's made breakfast for her. I think that's how we're gonna start. So we're starting pretty much from scratch. Now we have the dad design from a former pitch we've made. And we even have him talking when he talks on the phone with you. Now this is a close-up of him. You might notice it's a lot different line weight and all that stuff. But this, when you click on a character on the major screen, the uh, talk box pops up and you'll get some animation. And each one of those characters has to be animated the same way. And again, if you were at MAGFest, you might have seen this. And we can even show some footage of that if I can manage this technology thing. And no, we don't, Lawrence, we don't name our layers. But uh, you'll see why soon. So we 
I set up this this morning. I did a small version of the dad character here. And I did a one second cycle here of him kind of bouncing back and forth. And the reason we pick one second is twofold. Uh, it's easy to manage one second of animation kind of always looping. And two, uh, when it deals with music and stuff, you'll notice a lot of... Uh, a lot of beats always land on the second. So when you're, you'll, Tom and Jerry kind of perfected it, uh, animating two music. So we wanted to keep that kind of scale in mind. Now, if you go inside here, you'll see. Then this is for the super animation nerds. The chart here, a giant ease in, ease out, then reversal of frames, and then we add little touches here so it doesn't look so repetitive. We got the hair kind of doing a drag. I got the smoke kind of doing a drag. Uh, you'll see the eyes. Oh, that's the arm layer. You'll see that. But then I did the eyes doing a drag too. Just so it feels a little more lively. And it's, uh, you know, at 25% when you see it on the screen like here, it might not even pick up to most people. But uh, something like that, you know, it's the, the loves and the details. We try to keep it like that. So now this idle animation, it's fine for now. And if we're in a crunch, uh, we could probably just keep it. But I want to add something else so it doesn't just feel like he's staring here bouncing. So maybe we'll have him sip a cup of coffee or turn his head, add a blink, all that good stuff. Oh, oh someone, what is someone asking? How Flash MX? How, well, how long have we been working on this? Uh, oh, probably. OK. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm uh, my thing, uh, my uh, text things on the other side, the chat thing. We've been working on this for, what, Bob, now? Four and a half months, probably? Like on this, off and off, like on the side. Yeah, not yeah. constantly either. I, I should let everyone know this is a passion project that uh, us and the programmers had, and uh, we wanted to just kind of start working nights and weekends on something, trying to get something made, and we were lucky enough to be involved with MAGFest, this Baltimore independent uh, video game showcase. Um, so we we submitted something, they got us approved, and then we were just in crunch mode to get something done. And what we managed to make is about a 30-minute demo. Uh, and it, people seem to really enjoy it. I think uh, the aesthetic really helped. Uh, it being a little Zelda-like definitely helped. So it was kind of hitting on a lot of notes for a lot of people. And we were lucky enough to take home the Shiny Award, which... Uh, showcases um i think unique styles and stuff so we were picked out of 82 games to um to be given that award and for working on it four and a half months which might seem like a while but for independent games uh we're sitting next to someone who was working on his for seven years so we're very much in the infancy of that right now so and yes, Flash MX, uh, very cool. Uh, we That's all we use. We've tried Animate on different projects, and we've had to use Animate on uh, freelance projects. And uh, we just sort of coast through MX, and I don't know if it's the simplicity that we enjoy, or it's something that we all grew up with that we enjoy, but I personally like how it draws better, to me, not to everyone. Uh, I know how to manage it, and it's just a simplicity thing for me, and when you're running a small studio like ours, it's just Bob and myself, simplicity has to be a necessity. So that's what we're working with now. So I showed you this already, but here's what I did this morning, right before we started Twitch, and right before I canceled our first Twitch, because I didn't know what I was doing. So. As I showed everyone, these are all sort of symbol-based things. All hand-drawn, though. So you can see it's all raw art, for those who know Flash. Each frame is redrawn. You see when you zoom into 200%, you <laughs> may, might not be very impressed, but you have to see it at 25%. Got Dong, tell Dong if we weren't talking about him. Oh, Don said, uh, yeah, no, no, Don, you, you got the silver. You, you got, got the silver, silver for that. I know. There's a guy uh, adjacent to you who was working seven that we just learned about. <laughs> so, and everyone who doesn't know Don, you should check out his game, too, because it, he really put in a lot of time. It's his 20-level beat-em-up style, uh, side-scrolling, just epic pixel adventure. And uh, it's called Neon Krager. And Don, feel free to promote your stuff. 
it'll let, let this be the first time you do it. Okay, so as I was saying, we're gonna have this jovial little pop take a sip of coffee, I think. Now you'll see on the top here, I picked out 13, 25, 37, all the way to the six second mark. So each one of these is a frame. And these are where the beats hit. So I'll most likely start a new keyframe here. So then I see you always make, do you always make a chart? We usually never make chart. I never really made chart. I wanted to show it here to show that it was a classic ease in, ease out, which is kind of a rubber hose take technique, not so much a 90s technique. But I found all our animation landing on 1, 7, 13, or 5s or something like that. It was really jiving with the music. So. I wanted to show people the frames we like to use. And you can see here, um, we shoot a lot on ones and twos. Uh, we get asked a lot about um, if we do everything on ones. And there was a few we did, but more traditional stuff now we've been doing on twos. Uh, we did a short called Flex Caliber not too long ago. A lot of that was on threes, some of it was on fours. But, uh, so, no, it's, it's a very traditional way we're kind of approaching this. And the only really digital thing is the screen we're drawing on. So, the playfulness of these characters have always been fun to Bob and myself because, you know, model didn't really matter. And I know a lot of games, it's all about getting the model and the proportions right, but say I wanted to make this guy scream at Becky, he, she did something wrong, I could get him like, you know, really angry and it looks right. And you know he could shrink his hands a little bit. Becky, what are you doing? kind of thing and then we get to stuff like that you know and when you do that it all of a sudden becomes more of a cartoon than a game or yeah it's an interactive cartoon and it it never looked wrong to me so we really don't follow models that much I didn't find it to be important since I was primarily the character animator here and I only had to really figure it out myself and in a lot of the ways, it's sort of like the Ren and Stimpy style uh, in terms of how they never really had model sheets. Oh, good. Is, is good. Dong is showing off the stuff. Showed it off. Oh, you did it. Okay. I'm chatting for us. Do you make the check? Oh, okay, you got that. So let's see. I'm going to do a profile coffee sip because I like the way that looks and will really cartoony. So we're going to start just roughing out. Roughing out is always what you have to do first. A profile nose and maybe a sip it light. The music that you hear, if you hear it, made by Bob. He does all the sound and background work here. And we can have the cup of coffee here. We could do kind of a funny arm here, I think. We'll do a funny arm. And we'll animate the coffee separate and He's really enjoying it, so we'll really play with the profile here, or the silhouette, rather. So that's as rough as I really go with it. So I, unlike a lot of animators, I kind of do the key frame first, then I'll clean it up. Uh, it just helps me clarify things, and then I got a clean line for the in-between and stuff. So, let's see, he's going to take a sip of coffee here. So, you'll see I rough that out at 100%. Uh, I used brush 3, this is MX, and the uh, pressure sensitivity was off. Now let's see, I want to clean this up. I'll change the color just so I know what I'm looking at. Sometimes I'll do two roughs, but I think I can manage this one, especially at the percentage. Now, I'll go to 400%. That's what we've been cleaning up these sprites at. And you can see now my screen is just filled with that. Now, <clears throat> I use a super thick brush on this. Second to last, in fact. 
Uh, the reason I do that is because when we zoom out at 25%, which everyone seems to, uh, uh, which is technically 100% when you see it on the screen, uh, the line is a nice crisp looking line. It's not too bold, it's not too thin, and it looks like something I, what I imagine the line weight of, like, say, a Dexter would be, Dexter's uh, laboratory. So let's just start cleaning this up here. And Bob, if you just want to let me know if there's any questions, because I have not been good about that. Jay Sporing asked about who does the character design. But I can oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we kind of, you know, we based it off the Cartoon Network kind of 90s thing, so it's a kind of an amalgamation. I mean, I'll draw all the characters. Um, but it's it's very uh, it pays an homage to all those things, and it, it has a tad of Samurai Jack in it. I think when we get uh, into the nitty gritty, especially the the monsters are super Samurai Jack. I'll I'll bring up a monster file of these thing called the shadows. Now I'm gonna separate the arm here because we might want to play with the arm a little. So it's these are gonna be the layers we have talked about that Lawrence brought up actually. But the rest of it can kind of be in one. I'll probably separate the coffee too, just so in case that's a little off model. Well, we have the foot here, can add some shadow, a little bit of dimension. Now I changed the volume of him a little bit just so, because he's anticking to take a sip. So when he swallows the coffee, we'll bring the belly down here. We'll push that out later. But right now we're just working on that first pose. All right. And you see, it's fairly quick when you do it this small. The talking scenes take a little longer because they're a lot bigger, just in size, of the file. And we're using the same line weight, so it's a lot closer up than, say, that one. Okay. I'll group that, because you can group an MX, unlike Animate, where they botched that one. And don't worry, I've done my share of yelling at Animate, so they're not off the hook. Alright, I'm going to rough out... <laughs> okay, we could do this arm. Yeah, we were on the phone with Animate yesterday, uh, trying my nicest to be polite, but I was finding issues with the job we were working on, where the screen would just black out on us for apparently no reason. So, they didn't provide us with an answer, which not shocking, but uh, we're still renting it, so I guess the joke's on us. All right, now I'm going to rough out this arm because that was a kind of a hatchet job I did here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So a lot of those UPA kind of cartoons, we do flat surfaces here. We can round off, and you'll notice the volume of things sort of change a lot. So we'll get the hand in there. I also change the hand size a lot depending on what has to happen. You'll, uh, I'll open up the Becky files again, but you'll see her fists get huge at some points. Can even add a little shadow there to make it look a little more dimensional. All right. Lord says to have the black screens happening to him on, on Photoshop and. Uh, oh, it happens in all Adobe products. Oh. I might be a Windows well, it's good to be consistent, I guess. <laughs> I wonder if it's a Windows 7 thing. Uh, we use Windows 7, and it's because we're using MX, but uh, I've heard a lot of people use Windows 7 because Windows decided to get cute and act a little like Adobe, where they try to rent you stuff. And we rent the studio. We don't need to rent the programs, too. All right. Oh, I've been asked, are we hiring? Right now, it's just... Uh, us, us two. Uh, we, we've thought about scaling up a bunch of times, and depending on the project, but we've never really made financial sense of it since. I don't know if we're not asking our clients for enough money, or if people have our number, but we've never really made enough money to hire on talent. We've had interns before, 
And uh, we've paid our interns, actually, because I always thought if they're going to do the work, they should get paid. Uh, but it was only one really big job where we did the OK KO, Let's Play Hero video game. It was a nice budget, and we needed the help. So we actually hired out with that one, too, with a couple of close friends of ours. All right. So we got the coffee mug here. Let's color that up. All right. We also made a very simple color palette for all this. Uh, not a lot of shading. Um, we Again, we wanted to really bring home that 90s kind of look. All right. Let's color the coffee. All right. So... Now I technically got a new pose, in which case I'll make this a symbol. We'll add the coffee in later. Now I separate this stuff for a few reasons. I could adjust it slightly, which bothered me, which this seems to be working fine. Can move the arms differently. And if I want to do something with the torso and make more animation, we get a lot more mileage out of just doing the torso separate, arm separate, all that stuff and occasionally I'll even separate the eyes and all that stuff but it's really on a case-by-case -case basis all right so we're gonna make this a symbol for Cody's sake uh, we're gonna call this guy dad sipping so if we ever want to use this again and I don't know if we will uh, we'll have a sprite ready for him uh, Jason well, asked, would we ever consider using blender grease pencil professionally uh, we don't even know I don't, I, I, honestly, Jason, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I've heard of Grease Pencil 3D. Uh, I've seen people even make really nice shorts with it and stuff. Um, and uh, given the time, you know, if we were to learn more programs and all that stuff, I would love to, you know, learn more programs. I There's part of me, and running a business is scary like this, that... Um, are we gonna date ourselves out by using old technology? And you know, you hear horror stories of, like that all the time. So we have our head on a swivel and looking for the right program. Now, I don't have, I'm not sponsored by MX. They don't even exist anymore. I just happen to use it because it just works best for us. And I wish Animate worked that way because you know, we can update everything now. Like I said, we were using Windows 7. But as Lawrence brought up, even Photoshop's messing up. So the two things we do use for it uh, don't seem to be really going on all cylinders. After, After Effects is probably the only one. That After Effects is actually really good, and Bob is a whiz at that. So we got him taking a sip. Eventually, he's going to go back to that. And we'll probably do three poses here, because why do two when he could do three? Now, I'm going to do something like this. So I'm going to, since I want to get back to the original pose here, I'm going to use this as the third, uh, as reference for the third pose. Now he, uh, Bob's actually designing the house now and the kitchen and all that stuff. So I'm going to have him look around. So he's not just kind of looking face forward here. Even being incredulous. And again, the head shape kind of only sort of has to stay there. Now we'll shift his weight since he's kind of looking this way. We can even bring out the way here. Yeah, I'm not in love with that actually. Let's use the head again. So I'm this one. Maybe I'll look here like a little concerned. We'll keep his feet planted. Let's see, now he has his coffee, and his coffee will be over here, so. And you can see I work kind of loose and crappy and stuff, but that's all gets fixed in the cleanup. Whatever gets you from here to there is sort of my motto. So we'll look like that, point around. So we'll take a sip. So, 
the undoes are another thing that bothers me in anime, but I could do a whole nother twitch on what bothers me there. Okay, alright. So, takes a sip, looks around, back to normal. Now go out here. Now imagine Becky's walking around her kitchen and watching all this. Now it doesn't just feel so cycly, you know. We have a real kind of scene going here. And, you know, it's all in the details of these idle animations. And I think the bus scene we did kind of showcases what the spirit of the game will eventually be like. Where it's just this really lively cartoon that you just happen to be walking around in. Any pixel art characters showing up in the game? No, no, we have done pixel art in the past, but we want to keep this one as uh, kind of Cartoon Network centric as we can right Unless now. Maybe she played a Game Boy or something. Oh, you know that would be funny. You know that's a <laughs> so maybe there will be. Um, Dong's asking, do we Cintiq is holding the lead? Yeah, Cintiq is the major. I'm roughing this one out again, by the way. Um, Cintiq's the biggest tool and anyone who's serious about animation or starting freelance or starting a company or any of that I would highly suggest a Cintiq it's uh the only I, I don't know how people I remember having do you remember those old what are those uh, there it was Wacom right yeah it was, it was just no it was Wacom but like I remember drawing over to the side here yeah uh, I can't believe yeah, no, we got away with it that was crazy. No, Cintiqs are uh, just a godsend to us. Now you see, I'm going to play with his eyes being bigger here. Because I wanted to look kind of concerned. Maybe he's looking around. Something's not right in his kitchen. I play with the hair a little bit too. Like, the hair can be an emotional thing. Alright. So we're, again, we'll separate the arms. So we can kind of be pointing at his chin. Oh, yeah, no, Lawrence, you're not kidding. Um, I mean, I remember it was, we were, Cody and I were living in Brooklyn at the time when we had those um, old Wacom kind of tabs. And I remember at the time, I was like, oh, this is, this is incredible. Uh, I mean, we were drawing on paper. And um, everyone's thesis was done on paper when I graduated uh, SVA in 2002 or three, we were all uh, bringing it in and scanning into After Effects. And in fact, the future man Cody over there was one of uh, our assistants helping out with that stuff because he knew technology way better than me. And the same, the same thing's ha happening today too. I don't have uh, the technology down quite yet. So let's see. This one I'm going to actually separate the face too because we could do a nice blink and I'll show you a trick with how I might do the body here so we can get a lot of acting in with minimal work. And you can see when you have this thick brush for some reason you just get a lot more control over the line. I don't know if it's a confidence thing or it's just an actual flash thing but I just feel like you know when you like say I was trying to do this with brush two you know all of a sudden that line looks a lot less you can see there's a dip there dip here now I switch brushes and all of a sudden it just feels a lot more controlled and I I don't know what that is I've used brush two on plenty of projects uh, I was one of the lead animators on Super Jail Season 1 at Augur Blick Studios. And it was a very thin line weight that we had to kind of control. We were using Flash MX there too, actually. And I remember always using Brush 2 and how difficult it was on my hands. I, I was like trying to in between something when I was on Brush 2. I remember getting giant calluses and my hand locking up and all this sort of stuff that's not happening when I switch to brush 7 or whatever I'm using here so I don't know what that is but when you have to draw this much for just a simple sprite here anything that doesn't hurt your hands is going to be the way I'm going 
All right, now I use the same color for the vest and shoes, so I probably should have doubled down on that. Okay, so now... Cody said you were hurting on that project. Yeah, no, a lot of things. My liver was hurting, too. <laughs> that was a... I was younger then. All right, so I'm going to call this dad. Look, uh, torso 002. It's the second time I've drawn the torso for that. Now, the reason I made it a symbol is now I'm going to show you guys a trick called a shimmer or a line boil. And this is an efficient way to get a lot of mileage out of three drawings because we can make the eyes blink and all that stuff while keeping it on the same chart. So what I'm going to simply do, no rough outs needed here, I'm going to do my best to trace this back. And you, um, you'll see this in a bunch of shows, actually, that do the same sort of thing. You see it in a bunch of shorts. We, uh, it's a really cool idea to do, get a lot of mileage out of the same drawing, and it keeps sort of your eye interested in what's going on, and it keeps the film alive. Um, one of the projects Bob and I worked on for Nickelodeon we did this for called Plunger the Dragon and uh, how long was that Bob like five minutes or something something crazy uh, they made us do minutes, maybe it was three minutes I remember the boards being around they six be yeah initial. now um <clears throat> we uh shimmered the line and we really got away with a lot of like still shots all of a sudden and it still felt like we were just drawing every frame. So it really, I think it really well, we engaged the audience. <laughs> well, we also were drawing a lot too. So, so nothing really uh, complicated here with this one because you don't need to, you know, not everything has to be hard is a famous thing we always say around here because Productions sometimes seem to be hard when they don't have to be. And shortcuts, especially with sprite animation, and Andrew, our programmer, keeps telling us that we have to start making these sprites smaller because otherwise we're going to have a 14-minute game with just a bunch of animation. So we're finding shortcuts here and there. Uh, what do people call it, a line boil? A line boil, yes. I call it a... Like, why do they call it that? I guess I don't oh, know. it looks like... Be oh, they... It, I think the theory behind it is because when you zoom out and look at it, it looks like it's boiling underwater. Probably I kind of how like the hair and stuff used to go in stop motion. Yes, and uh, like the hair looked like in stop motion. Uh, I know it was called a shimmer when I was working at Augen Look Studios. I've heard it called a trace back, but it's all the same principle. And it's just really uh, an efficient way to make uh, a few drawings last a long time. Oh, whoops, that's his vest. And I forgot the shoes again. There we go. All right. So since I made this a graphic, the symbol a graphic, which all you flash people know what that means, but it means it'll loop outside of this too. Now you see at 50%, and there's a little chunk there too. I'm not exactly happy with, but at 25%, it kind of feels alive again. And I, I, I constantly have to remind myself this is what it's going to be seen at. So, um, in order to save time, we will kind of let those little things slide, whereas if it was something different, we might catch it and redraw it a little bit. Okay, so we got the eyes here. Someone writes, oh, Lawrence A. Nice. Thanks, Lawrence. All right, so we got this lip here. All right. Okay. So let me color that, and I'll show you how I would do a blink for this guy. G. Again, this goes right on top, and now you see he's like that. Now, when I make him a symbol, which I'll finish the rest of the body first, 
we'll separate everything and then I'll do some blinking animation or looking around just to make things interesting. Now let's see, do I like this hand? Not terribly, no. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all, in fact. That works. That works a little better. This is called the match cut when this layer is going to go on top, but I had to keep the... It's supposed to look like it's behind and forward, and I know a lot of Flash people have the instinct to maybe separate that forearm and back arm, but for something that we're trying to do traditional, I think the match cut works a lot better. Uh, just a little more natural feeling, and you could get bogged down with too many layers. All right, now the cup of coffee, and we can even bring back the steam, which I separated as a symbol in that. But I'm going to see what the steam looks like over top of the dad, because I don't want it to be too distracting, because silhouette is definitely key with these kind of games. Now his arm's behind it here, because he's, uh, it's just the angle we're working with here, so don't even have to worry about a hand here. And is his shoulder too big? Maybe a little bit. Start that one over. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's color this bad boy. I forgot his collar. Or whatever his sleeve. And what color is the collar? There you are, and I know the color of the mug. All right. So now I got this pose. Drink, drink. Let's see, let's, let's try the steam. I made that a symbol too. And you can see even the steam follows the same chart, so it's not even an even kind of smoke, but I kind of like the way it timed out a little different. It doesn't feel so mechanical. Uh, yeah, I can tell this is not going to be something they would do, really. Um, it's just something I feel like Dexter or them wouldn't do. It just, these transparencies, like you would always have a black line under it or something, or it would be a layer that they wouldn't bother with. So we might stop the smoke there. We'll have it pop back up when it gets to that. So, oh, I did the same shiver technique in After Effects. Oh yeah, we do that stuff in After Effects too. We do done backgrounds with uh, like canvas textures that it was supposed to look like a new painting every time. We'd flip the canvas and do that stuff, and then Bob would uh, make it into a loop and stuff. And it, it really is effective that thing. I I we've done a few shorts for the Angry Video Game Nerd where we all we did was shimmer. It was really cool. Oh, that hit the spot. Okay. So let me make this guy a symbol. We'll call this Dad Pose 03. Because I got one, two, three. And that's gonna go inside there. Alright. And we'll follow this chart since we can do it. Now what's nice about kind of doing these things in chunks like that. Is that all it is? That's all three. Okay. Is now say I don't like the timing of this. I can all of a sudden move these to any of these other top keyframes to whatever timing I want. So say I want them to look over here for a while longer or something. And in this case scenario, I'm going to try that just to show you how I would do like some face acting here while keeping everything on the same chart. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you another secret we do. We're going to animate the eyes the way we want them to animate. They don't have to be on twos because I'll go back inside the symbol and follow whatever chart I do with the eyes. And that sounds a little cryptic, but I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's see. The eyes are here. I'll have them blink. And when you work this small, you could really, you don't need to separate the eyes too. And I, in fact, like adding all 
the kind of uh, squash and stretch here because you could get a really uh, playful kind of look here. Now this isn't for every style obviously and let's say I want him to look over here then like you could be looking up at the ceiling you could change the volume there Uh, Jay Spore asked how long the coin takes to make. Uh, the, the short coin, the, short, the, yeah. the, the one that people saw. <laughs> um, that one. The, that one. Uh, gosh, it took, I was working at Augenblick at the time, but we didn't release it till we um, opened the studio. Uh, I think it, we opened it in 2013, and I probably started it 2011. Um, I worked on it just at nights, though, on the weekends, and uh, I, I probably wasn't even working as fast as I could, honestly. I was taking a lot of time off. Like, I'd finish the animatic, and then I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll take a break from it and stuff. Um, if someone asked us to do that style again, and how long would it take? I don't know, Bob, what would be a good... Uh, it's it's a tough style because everything was moving and everything was on ones but kind of knowing what we're doing now i bet we could do that short in two months like with what we know now that now you know uh, probably more maybe a little longer <laughs> well the pilot we did for coin we did in six months but that was eight minutes so i'm just uh, trying to kind of yeah. well, like and, no, and six months went to writing yeah, no, there was a lot of problems we had with that one. Again, I would need another Twitch to explain like the, that story. Like Bob Ross is on this, uh. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know all Bob Ross is all about good vibes. We're the opposite. Um. Okay, so we get down. Boom. Okay, and that's a little too slow. So let's see, and we could really like squash them down. No, I know this is an unpopular thing I'm going to do, but I don't always rough out stuff because, again, time is of the essence. I'm very familiar with these characters. Um, it's such a small sprite that a 25% inconsistencies aren't the biggest deal, so I can do stuff like that to get away with more. And Like, I'll... I'll, a lot of times I will just sort of, I'll rough out the poses and then the overshoots and the antics and all that stuff I can kind of get away with. Like this will be an overshoot because I know he's looking up. We'll just extend everything up. Alright. So, we have a blink like that and again that's a little slow for my liking and then we'll go back to that okay so what I'll do here just start in betweening this now something like this I might rip out though I've done it in the past but for argument's sake I'm gonna do that here uh, these eyes are interesting because we don't do eyelids we kind of just do as you can see these little u-shaped things so what we'll do depending on the mood like this is all of a sudden him looking angry kind of thing so we'll just kind of play with these parts going down not so much meeting in the middle uh, someone asked what if you need the thinner lines do you still use are you still using a big brush and scale down no I'll do a different percentage say I wanted to clean up like uh, like let's say I there was a hand that we wanted to clean up like like that. Now uh, I would go to say 600. 600 percent. Then I would use something like along the lines of brush 4 or brush 5. And then you would get a thinner line. Uh, it all depends on the look you're kind of going for. And then you could add all the detail. But uh, we have a lot of the projects we do are a lot of thin lines because um, it just uh, sort of a more traditional look, I think, is the thin line because everyone was using micron pens and 
I mean, that was rough. But you can see the difference between... You know, so that, that was a brush five. And if you want to go thinner, you could go brush three, or you could change the percentage and go zoom in a little further. So that's sort of how we play. Now we're just using 400 now because these these characters are so big within. Now what Cody will do is shrink these 25% to lower them in size, and that will be the actual size you see on the screen. But I just get a lot more control with these cartoony characters with the big brush. And then Andrew will program all then, then Andrew does all. When Cody messes up, then Andrew comes into the rescue, and then we have, then we'll have a game. Those of us who know Cody's relationship with everyone, he's sort of the <laughs> whipping boy that we kind of just all take everything out of. So there we go. Now we'll get that. Get these eyes finished. Show you what I mean about the. Make sure I'm on the head still. All right, so I'll change that to here. Now we'll do kind of an ease in because we'll make it nice and subtle. So this will be the next keyframe. And again, this is not a very popular animation technique where I don't rough it out, but... Popular around here. Popular, yeah. No, it's very popular at the studio <laughs> and on our bank. Let's get this done. And those of you just joining, uh, we do apologize for the camera being so bright. That's just the uh, that's uh, just the studio we chose. That's really good sunlight. Most animators are. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're like incubated. See if we even like this timing after all that. Now if I want it uh, quicker, I'll just squeeze these keyframes together. We try to use every part of everything we use here, so there's not a lot of wasted drawings. Um, and uh, I'm sure anyone who's an animator in this group or worked on a film sort of feels the same way. So that feels pretty good timing. Uh, let's see. And you'll see a lot, if you guys can see my keyframes here, I do a lot of this, like the ease in, ease out, where it'll start on twos, shoot to ones, and then ease out on twos again. It's just sort of a more natural way of movement, I found. And I think next week we're going to add a Becky attack because that's a little more exciting for the people to watch I think and this was just kind of trying to introduce some methods on, to our madness a little bit no no we see uh, we'll, we'll see where it can speed up too and the answer is everywhere <laughs> and um no, I, we have uh, big plans for a lot more monsters in this game right now. <laughs> and trust me, we, we, we got a, a lot of feedback of just having rats and bats in ours from a, well, from a person who might actually make an appearance in the video game now. And he knows who he is. All right. So this is going to be a giant ease out here. So now I'll just sort of time out where this feels like. I might extend that a little. Okay. So now since I'm doing an overshoot, this is sort of the antic down when he blinks, overshoots, and bounces back. This will be the next keyframe I choose. Just because it's the halfway point, that'll give it the best pop. And if I did it the opposite way, it wouldn't feel right to even overshoot. 
Lawrence asked, is this typical of your normal anime speed? I work, uh, well, demo. the more card, the... Like, just because I, I, cause you're demoing, are you moving a little slower probably than you normally? Yeah, I usually work a lot faster. Um, I usually don't drink while drawing either, so... Um, I'm doing that, and I want to try to explain and showcase stuff, but usually I get in the real zone, especially when I'm working at night. I'll work a lot quicker. Um, but someone asked, uh, some... Oh, yeah, let me show you some of the monster stuff. That's probably the more Samurai Jack kind of thing. So I'll come back to that, get that eye thing, and then I'll show you how I shimmer the, um, body a little bit different. All right, so where are the shadow vamps? Okay. Now you can see uh, we made these in about a day, all this animation. Uh, two days. That's a lie. I did the idol and then the next night. So we had a uh, meet and greet with Andrew, Cody, Greg, Bob, and I. We're like, we need to add another monster. So I was like, okay, we'll figure that out. And two days later, I showed up with this, and I was like, and this is where the magic of programming comes in, because I can't believe they managed this. And I was like, okay, this is my idea. This will be the shadow monster appearing. And this is all on ones. Again, because I guess I don't like myself. Um, so he appears, dissipates. This will be the idol him kind of moving around the screen kind of like that so again I, I, we and we make shortcuts because it's like you can see this guy has legs you can see it here right here he has the legs right here but we masked him in a cape so we could just have to move the cape now you'll notice the same the main character has the same kind of thing so that's the idol now, at one point, you get... The idea is um, of the game is she kind of picks up items from around the school and uses them to her advantage. So you'll eventually get a pencil where you throw uh, vampires if you hit them in the heart, or in this case, the eye. They'll disappear. So a lot of people were throwing the pencils initially just to kill everything at long range. So we thought it'd be cool if you had to fight this one close range at first and then hit it with a pencil. So if you threw a pencil at, one, at him from a distance, he would up and disappear. So you couldn't hit him. So he'd kind of turn into a bat, throw himself into the ether. Now if you got too close to attack him and waited too long, he'd do this sort of spear attack and disappear. And you can see I shot some stuff on twos here. Now say you hit him. Okay. You hit him, he got close enough. Now this kind of visceral eye shows up. And we used eyes as sort of the sensitive part. And you, it was fascinating watching people kind of get that in the game without explaining it. Now, if you tried to hit this eye with the fist, nothing would happen. So the uh, player would eventually learn to throw a pencil into the eye. And if you waited too long, he up and disappears again. Turns into that. Now you get hit with a pencil, get some blood, the pencil's right there, disappear, you kill them. So it was, it was fun watching people play because you're, you get introduced, you have to kill all these rats, and you're just using your fist. Then you eventually get the pencil, then you throw in that, and then there's monsters you can only kill with the pe pencils, not your fist. And then this one, we kind of marry the two together. and. For the animators out there, what you could do is you'd grab all this. And I'll show you the full animation. I'm going to make a new file for you. Okay, this is all at 25%. Okay, so this is what you see on the screen. Now we could get a full animation out of just six poses. So I'm going to call this, say, Vampire 1. So now, these are all embedded symbols. So at 25 frames, let's move him to this 
I did. So frame 25, I'm going to swap out the symbol for the idle. And everything's registered now. Got to make sure that's frame 1, though. So now, if you see, it goes into sort of this uh, loop now where hopefully it's seamless if we set it up right. Okay, now you get too close to him. We're going to do an attack. Again, you have to set it to frame one. And this is all swapping symbols and making sure everything's registered. Disappear. Now we can have them appear again. And I'll just copy that. Copy those frames. Shows up again. Get too close. He's going to attack. And you see we kind of call everything what it is. So Cody knows what he's doing. He sets down. Disappears. Then we copy those frames again. Now let's say you hit him. Attack to damage is what I call that one. Frame one. Get close enough to hit him. Boom. He's exposed. Now swap, and you got the death animation. I didn't even add the dodge in there, but I think you guys get the idea. And... Cody, you've seen this before. I got to play once. Alright. So now we kind of just got this. And you see, I set up six pretty basic symbols. Nothing crazy here. And now we have this, like, ten seconds of animation here. Uh, even longer than that. So, um, we kind of set it up in the same way we did this cartoon called Voltron, which was a video game inspired pixel related adventure. You guys can check out on YouTube if you're so inclined. So, that's sort of the symbol based animation we kind of use. That's one one. And uh, the same thing kind of went for every. Oh, where's the the rat library? Now the rats, we we did every angle. So we got all the attacks, all the appears right here, the hits, the runs, the appears, the kills, the kills right here. I was really proud of the kill. That was kind of fun and cartoony. And uh, at one point we were gonna have a rat king kind of thing. We never he never made it in there, so. A little behind the scenes here. That's a library. That's the library. Now we're gonna have plenty more villains in all this, but uh, for a 30 minute demo, we're pretty happy that we had three and a giant boss. So where was I here? Let me finish these eyes. So again, we're gonna do the bottom kind of remaining the same shape. And we'll have the pupil kind of following up here. It's already been, uh, it's already been an hour. Should we do a two hour? Uh, we could do a two hour one. I got, I got two more drinks. <laughs> it's going to take me two hours to do the shimmer, I think. Um, okay, so now we'll get the eye. Wrong color. And... What we want to do with Blood, essentially, is have the audience that has been watching and playing and following it kind of, you know, give us suggestions. What kind of villains would you like? Uh, what kind of puzzles would you guys like? Is there certain story elements we're not hitting upon? You know, we... Yeah, I, I don't... And I don't know if this is true or not, but I just haven't seen a lot of companies sort of ask the audience what they want until it's been too late. Now, you know, we're such a small company that I'm not afraid to put this on Instagram tonight. You know, because there's nothing here to really hide. I want people to be engaged with everything. I want people to be invested in this game as much as we are. Um, and 
since blood gained a little bit of traction, I noticed people just wanted to see more and more of it, and why not have them be part of this adventure with us? Because it's an organic thing we're building, too. We're still writing the story, we're still thinking of different level ideas, we're still, you know, uh, Andrew and I were talking at MAGFest, it's like, it'd be cool if we did, since she's um, into sports, the uh, protagonist, it's like, why don't we do a field hockey level, where it's not even about... Um, fighting vampires or anything and in doing so you can learn how to use what you eventually get a field hockey stick that you sharpen and use as a weapon to hurt vampires so it's like you know just stuff like that and you know when we first started it it was nothing like that we we the first styles of this thing we weren't even sure what we were really getting into we wanted it to look like a game first not even a cartoon and I remember a few nights where we What's that? Cody kind of talked to us. He's like, just do what you would do. No, yeah, Cody kind of, it's like, you guys are an animation studio, make it an animation. Because we were working hard to make it, or not, yeah, we were just confused. We are just like, should we make it look like a game? So we are doing a lot more puppeting and kind of, just nothing really no, no exciting. Holding no holding lines. It didn't really look. Well, it, I guess we are trying to go for sort of a Samurai Jack style, but... Uh, it just wasn't jiving, and I think what makes it stand out is that it actually looks like a cartoon now, not just sort of uh, Zelda clone. Alright, so we're doing the settle here for the eyes. Then I'll get those eyes back to where we need to get it, and then I'll show you what I do. Nobody wants to know why we don't listen to him, but we'll listen to the audience. Oh, uh, we just listen to smart people, is what I, 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 I don't know what to tell you about. <laughs> it's all about respect. You have, to earn. <laughs> you, have to earn you have to earn respect. You'll get there. Maybe. We'll have to live pretty long, I guess. Um, no, it's fun at MAGFest because, uh, Bob and I have made films and we've hosted film festivals. Uh, just, we, to play our just to play our films. No one else seems to want to watch them. So we'll pay theaters to screen <laughs> them for us. Um, and you get to watch an audience enjoy your film. And that's pretty cool. Uh, three minutes pass and it's over. So seeing this and people actually interact with your creations has been a very fascinating journey for us because all of a sudden when you hit left on this controller Becky turns left and now that sounds awesome for an animator because imagine if it was just plugging in your old PlayStation controller and just getting to tell a story that way and that's sort of what we're doing here we're just using a lot of animation but we're gonna be telling a seven hour story at the end of it and what it would take to probably animate a half hour show so it's a very efficient sort of storytelling method these video games would a demo at midsummer uh animation be possible yes me uh, oh so uh, who's asking that uh oh uh yeah uh we're we help uh sponsor that that's the one we're talking about and we're in cahoots with matt lee is that, who is that matt lee <laughs> oh, it might be. Who <laughs> I've been talking to Matt Lee about um, uh, having um, an Xbox there and getting to show a demo and stuff. So that will be part of well, a Midsummer Night's Dream. This morning would be kind of interesting is to do like a like a whole new cutscene that no one sees. That looks yes. Like we can show and then. Yeah, we're going to make a trailer for the game that's just traditionally animated. Uh, it'll probably be somewhat of an intro to the game that will be part of the game. We'll keep that kind of close to the best. And from there, we're going to air it. And then hopefully anyone who wants to play the game at Midsummer Night Tunes will be able to play it. And uh, no, all we'll need is uh, a few computers, whatever we've brought to MAGFest. And... By the summer, we should have... I think we should be on Xbox, actually, so we might be able to... Oh, it'll be on Xbox? We might be able to have Oh, we could do it on Xbox, that's right. Um, yeah, so... Ask Cody. We'll have to ask... You have to ask the future <laughs> man that. 
I'll draw enough to, to do it. I'll do it. Okay, so we got these blinks. Let's get them back to square one. Okay. So we got them thinking, 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 thinking. We'll get them back to this, this frame. So. And then it could just cycle. No, oh, look at that. How many followers? I don't <laughs> I don't know how to do Twitch. Um, let's see. We'll ease in these out, this one, so it's nice and smooth. And we'll spread that out. Uh, for those who don't know that vernacular, ease in, ease out, is when you take the same amount of frames and kind of squeeze them in the middle. So it's fastest in the middle, slows in, slows out kind of thing. Uh, let's see. So we got this shape. Now, usually the pupils, you know, I'll pick one side or that side in favor. But since it's kind of a smear frame, we'll just go right down the middle here. It's not my way. But it's not my way. Um, I'm glad someone knows of that festival, though. That's a that's a fun time in the city. And anyone who's uh, New York-centric should check it out. We've been sponsoring that festival along with Matt Lee for the last five years. Uh, it's been going for ten years, actually. I can't believe it's been a decade. Um, um, and no, I, I hopefully our pretty polished demo by that point. Oh yeah, well, I mean, at the very least, we have a twenty-minute demo, but I want another level. I want more characters in it, and I want to work Cody and Andrew to the bone. So that's the plan. And Greg, I don't know if Greg's part of this too. Like, is he in this Twitch? Greg, are you there, or can you not say that you're at work? <laughs> Okay, so we'll do a little ease and ease out here. Is that email for? This is it. Did you see anything? Okay, probably not. We, we despise the email sound. That yeah, that's usually it's, we. It's usually time we, to do notes. We did a client wrong. <laughs> that noise my phone didn't make. All right. Uh, uh, Cody would said when we finish the bat. Oh, the bats. Yeah, I had to finish those bats. It's yeah. funny because I don't think it was the bat that was the problem. It was the pencils. <laughs> a problem I remember. What, uh, the, interesting to take a poll or something, what other uh, kind of creepy crawly creatures would be fun in a vampire game? Other than vampires. Anyone uh, has suggestions? Maybe we can animate that next Twitch. Oh, somebody had... How do we pronounce the game? It's hashtag blood. Um, we figured it's kind of how a, a I messed up. Thirteen year old girl would. Uh, yeah, we're kind of. It's a middle school age girl, and it's kind of like we want to use their kind of language and stuff. So you know what? Yeah, and we're gonna release this in 2020. So whatever. I don't. Know, we probably won't even say on fleek or anything like that yet because <laughs> that'll be out of touch. So we're gonna have to really go visit Urban Dictionary and figure this th stuff out. But we, we definitely wanted it to be from her perspective and her kind of growing up um, in this kind of vicious world we're building. Some, somehow a little is off, I guess. So I'm gonna ease out even more. So that's, um, yeah, that'll be a nice kind of timing kind of thing. <coughs> All right, one more in between for the for the cheap seats in the back. Okay. All right. Any any suggestions for the creepy crawlers? Is there nothing? Oh, nothing? No, we need Greg to go. We're gonna have to send oh. Greg to middle schools. Oh we'll uh, yeah, that is a long coat and some. Uh, a trench coat. A trench coat. Is maybe maybe a de maybe a duster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll tell everybody about our poll left. Oh, yeah, we did a, uh, I don't know if you guys have been to game conventions, but um, there was an inordinate amount of uh, grown, middle-aged, balding men all sporting ponytails, which was a real, uh, a real treat for me because I, I kind of set up a visual poll for that, too, and uh, there was 117 of them one day. Male ponytails. 
male ponytails. And 40% of them didn't have, didn't have enough hair to do it, so it was our stable. <laughs> I called it our stable, our pony stable. Um, All right, so we got the eyes here. Oh, Asian guys, man, uh, he was 90% sure that we motion tweaked our animation. Oh, no, some people accuse us of that. You see, when you work this close with the percentage, a lot of people think that. Now, there has been... We do do cheats, I'm not going to lie. I'll show you, actually, this thing we worked on in Blood that has a cheat in it. That I'll, I'll show you how we kind of get away with that. It was in a cutaway. <laughs> Cinematics, is that it? Dream cinematic. Oh, is this just a render? No, I need the... I, need I might not. I don't know where you're Do going. we not have that? I set that up in the... Can we... Oh, yeah, I don't know if it's in the animation. It might oh, Drayton. Here we go. Alright. So, uh, Becky has these premonitions of um, her lost mother. Throughout the game, every time she falls asleep, she kind of has this uh, nightmare. So each... Each time she falls asleep, we get a new piece of the puzzle of what happened to her, her mom. And in this one, oh, you can hit enter, Chris. We kind of show kind of the beginning of this. She's cradling what what uh, appears to be Becky. Now this is running at an all-time slow. Uh, So that's running 10 frames. Uh, yeah, yeah, the background. Let me turn off the background. Now can this play right? Okay, this plays a little better. So, and the shadow vampires bite you. We got all the sound and stuff in there. So what we did with this one. We did this a few times in a bunch of things, actually, and it's a good kind of cheat to keep the line weight accurate. This is probably broken now. Oh, this is a lot of layers. Whoopsie! Okay, yeah. So... Yeah, did I keep the symbol is the question. Okay, no, so I got this cycle. So I did this cycle of... the mom. And this is all in line tool not the brush all of a sudden. So there's a lot of manipulating the line. And I'll give anim Animate CC its due. Using the line tool is a lot easier than in MX, but we still use the brush tool too much to really play around with it. So we kind of did this cycle. And we changed her. Now, a neat thing you could do, and I don't know, maybe it's because of the limitations of MX, but you could take that symbol let me find it again. Here. So we got the cycle symbol. And this is the the size of her in within the symbol. Now, I like the line weight here. I know it's on twos. I could blow this up to 400%. Now the line weight's still not, not that bad. But then you can motion tween it. Okay, looks really artificial, really flashy, not great, right? It'll do in a pinch, but just not really what we're looking for. And you can scale it to any size with line tool now. So you kind of got all this stuff. We'll do an ease and ease out. So we got this kind of camera move now. You did the animation, now you like the camera move. Now remember, this is just a 24 frame cycle now. And I've just got 100 frames of animation out of it. So it's super efficient doing things like that. Now we now I animate the hair traditionally. I The bangs traditionally. And there's a part where the um, the palm of the demon kind of uh, opens up. I did that traditionally. So there are traditional elements, but I'm not sitting here retracing a camera move but by doing it this way now that's a little thick right now if you break it all of a sudden she's the line weight you pick which is 1.5 now say I don't even like 
that line weight. I think it's too thin. I can thicken it up any time I want now with the percentage of line. And then all you do is take each keyframe. You can select all if you want. Break it. And now you have a camera move that looks like you traced it back and the line weight stays pinpoint accurate. So we did that in a bunch of backgrounds with flex caliber. Uh, I've done that a lot in the coin pilot we did. It's just sort of a cheat we uh, have to use to get kind of a cool camera move. And what I like about shooting it on twos is it looks hand drawn and you can shoot it on threes and fours. All of a sudden you kind of get this real almost anime timing if you really play around with it. Not to say this looks like anime, but you can kind of get the timing of it. And you can speed it up in the middle and all that stuff. So then you get that kind of look. So it's kind of a neat cheat we do. But by and large, we do most of our stuff traditionally, especially with this aesthetic. Okay, so back to the dad dude. Okay, so he's looking around. Now, what's important to me is keeping the body on the same chart as the eyes. Else it just looks like, you can see there'll be certain points where the body moves and the eyes don't. And to me, I, my eyes always picked up on that. I don't know if it's because it was ingrained in my head when I worked at Augenblick, not to do it that way. So I'll copy these frames. I'll put them on top here. So I, I know the exact frame or the exact amount of frames I need to do. Now I'll copy these frames and simply just match the timing of it all. And I'll use this timing throughout. Like so whatever I do with the coffee mug or him scratching his chin, I'm going to keep that the same exact chart. Now when it ends on the first frame, so this one and this one's the same, I'm going to just take frame two and push it over here just so that's all the same now. Get rid of that. So now we got this guy blinking, kind of looking around. Now I want him to say scratch his chin. I'll just kind of go on top of this now. So it, it, it is strange when you work this way in Flash because um, it's not exactly like I'm roughing out each pose and each drawing or anything. I'm kind of starting with the face first, almost, when something like this, because the face is sort of the focal point, especially with the characters with the head the size. So I'll kind of rough out all my acting with the face, then do everything on top of the face. Not on top of the face, on top of the timing of the face. So let's say we want him to like kind of scratch his chin. We'll rough out something here, bend it. How long are we thinking now? Well, we were thinking these episodes were going to be probably about an hour, but we already decided. All these Twitch to things. I, I you, we have a lot to learn in terms of <laughs> like how I'm going to read this, how long these should be. What's the typical Twitch thing when you're animating? I don't even. No, but we'll um, and we're definitely we're gonna leave them up for repeat. Yeah, no, and we're gonna probably do a how, yeah, and we we might even do a Facebook Live thing or something like that, or put it on YouTube, any of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I like um, giving out our animation tips. I, I find it rewarding, and uh, well, I did. Oh man, I did this guy thin. Two hours. Who did? So we'll probably do like two hours. Today. We'll do two hours today. Uh, next Friday, we'll see how long some of these take, but uh, I want to get uh, a few poses in there at least, and then I'll show you the final product whenever we post it. Then we can post it on Instagram. Maybe Cody can get it in the game. Who knows? So we got kind of this thing. And, uh, yeah, we'll do that. So this again, the line weight's a little off, but at a eight, 400%, that doesn't matter. Now for this one, I'll go up with this finger, just so it's a bit of an arc. And it just gives a little more character, not so straightforward. And 
and then I'll go back. We could do this one. And this one I'll do the finger down actually. Just to get a little more. Just a little more kind of circular motion. And it's sort of those little details I find that make the difference and add a lot of charm. And it's it really is all about charm for me. It's not really technicalities or is this smooth or anything but you see now we kind of got this thing figured out here now i'm just gonna re whatever i d say this is fully animated i'm gonna repeat these frames over here and make sure it loops so he'll get this thing so again it'll be an ease and ease out whoops does who, who what who's texting us Bob? We're getting secret notes here, guys. I think Cody's being in. Oh, or is that is that Greg? Oh, Gregory. Is he watching? Uh, Text uh, one for yes. <laughs> uh, two hours. Oh, it's two hours. Well, that's how they do it. Okay. Like, probably won't watch it. Yeah. That's uh, cool. How often do we plan on streaming? I, I, I want to do every Friday for well, a while. Yeah, you know, as long as we can, if we have the time. Yeah, no, I want to do this, it, one, for a few reasons. I want people to be savvy on what we're doing with the game. I don't want to look like we're laxing up. And two, it gives me an excuse to work on the game, which um, is just as important as doing it, I think. And, uh, no, and hopefully we build a little audience around it. We have, um, we'll have a mailing list going around. We're going to be sending out the demo. Do you have an Xbox? Uh, I don't think so. Not not today, no. Don't but no, but eventually in 2019, we're hoping for a 2020 release, and uh, you know, we have to do what we can to kind of show this thing because otherwise they're just sitting there. And I'm talking to you, Dong, Mister Five Years. I'm not going to release my game. Are we going to beat Dong, everyone? I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh. Is Dong writing back? I want to play. Oh, um, yeah. It, oh, what? Uh, what's the winds are doing? Are, are you in the New York area? Because we will have a physical thing soon. Windsor, Dinser. What is the secret behind Echo Thirty Three? Oh man, working late. Um, it's annoying your family. Uh, get on the cusp of always pissing off our wives because we're working late. I don't know what the secret to a strong marriage is. <laughs> I'll give you that much. Um, oh, that's it. Okay. So, let's get this hand done here. I've dilly-dallied enough with this, this dad. I could show you some of the boss animation, too. Lion <laughs> I'm a queen. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, at least during the summer, but I think, uh, and Andrew, maybe you can answer this. When's the New York kind of demo thing that we were talking about at MagFest? Yeah, there's going to be a, there's a few New York plays. There's a New York, like, kind of indie game scene. We'll be sure to, we'll be sure to be there. And we'll, we'll definitely tweet it out. Right? We'll tweet it out. And when we get, you know, the demo right now is that sort of a fragile spot where it's 20 minutes if you're good. Um, if you're kind of exploring, probably closer to 30. Um, it kind of showcases the foundation of what we want to do. It has a lot of talking in it. Really charming dialogue written by Greg. Um, Greg Lane. And um, it kind of just shows what we're planning on doing. it, And it doesn't even necessarily mean it's going to be indicative of the what actually happens in the game. It's just something that will... That, like the um, engine of it, in other words, is sort of built. Uh, Andrew was saying not official, but... Not uh, official? Do we have to get in first? Playcrafting Expo. The next February Playcraft. 2nd. Oh, okay. February 2nd. That's not... That's close. Jesus. We better get our act together. You think I'll finish this one hand by February 2nd? <laughs> It could be forever. Um, how many of you guys are animators? Any any animators in here? Themselves? Where you work? What you do? Watching the presses. 
Oh, After Effects animator. All right. What what are you working on? Any anything you can tell us? Motion graphics. Well, that's uh, that's giant now. Too. Yeah. Right, and do you work in Queens or Manhattan? Oh, SVA grad. Look at this. We have like an SVA reunion here. We might have to rename this this thing just SVA. Oh, boring corporate stuff. Well, that stuff pays at least. That's, uh, that's you you could make games like us and make no money. <laughs> uh, people often ask like, um, why did he start Exit Seventy Three, and um, what made you start it? And I always tell them, well, you can be poor anywhere, so why not where we grew up? All right, so we got this hand going. And we'll follow the same chart. I hear Toon Boom does this automatically, like when you color, like it just colors everything. Kind of wish, like, Flash would, like, do stuff like that. It probably does. I did sit here bashing anime. They probably do everything I want. Oh yeah, me too. I, I I hear good things about Toon Boom, but it just seems like everything has its pros and cons, honestly. And um, I yeah, no, I definitely does. So what I'm gonna do here is follow the same chart as the eyes again. Whoops. Push that. In. And did we time it out right? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, we're going to need one more in between. And that's how you roll with these punches. You just do it. Just make it work. And and then I'll probably just shimmer the coffee um, mug and arm just to be the same chart. Uh, you, I, can, I tend to get in the habit where I animate everything and um, want to do it. And sometimes less is more, I find, too. And I, I constantly have to battle battle that kind of instinct to just make sure we're on a, some type of schedule. Alright, so we got everything kind of jive in here right now. So, hmm. Now, I'll, I'll shimmer the um, coffee mug soon, but I just want to show you everything that we got so far. So we got that. We're gonna have to animate a sip. It's looking over here. It comes, kind of goes back here. Now, if you can imagine Becky and, and him in one of these backgrounds. Um, oh, I should mention this too. This, we do everything in increments of Becky. So Becky's yay tall, you'll see the gray bar here. And um, I try to make the adults twice as tall uh, the bigger villains twice as tall, and the giant villains forget about it. Oh, well, let's not forget about it. Let's actually look. Oh, b -b 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 character giant vamp. That's the one. All right. So you can see little Becky down here. If you get a jeweler's loop, you can maybe see her. So this is one of the the baddies. So we got a real big guy here. And he was pretty simple to do actually. He has, you could, if you could read this up here, I don't know. We got Vamp up here, which means he's just showing up. The Idol, which is giant ease and ease out. An attack, he's just screamed. Again, we're trying to kind of enforce the eyeball being the vulnerable spot. The attack, when he gets hit. And you'll see a lot of it. It's like I just changed the eyes here because I, uh, drawing him was crazy with the line weight we were doing. And then the death, I kind of just did a bunch of particle effects that, uh, uh, and, like these are the things where we puppet and cheat when it's just particles and stuff like that. So we got that big fan. And one of the cooler animations, and it kind of opened up the idea of like, it's not just people turning into vampires, but the vampire is this virus inside you that takes over. 
was where is the school teacher? Yeah, we'll teacher. Doing a lot more of that. Yeah, I, I could see that. So we made a library. So this is one. This is uh, Mr. Rockwell. He's one of the beloved teachers at the studio. The studio at the school. So we got him talking and stuff. Then he kind of feels sick, and you can see this kind of tentacle pops out, and bam. Now, what's with inside of him was sort of this clone of him that kind of breaks loose. Now this thing sinks down into the earth, and that's when these tentacles come out and all that stuff. So we kind of want to do, it's almost a vampire slash zombie hybrid almost, where uh, the virus doesn't take hold right away, uh, but it does eventually take care of or eventually kill you. So you can see all this work went into him. And you, you see, we just did this one all traditional. Right? It was not worth puppeting. It was not worth doing anything. I'll show you guys another time. It's what we call, in Super Jail, we coined it as the Jared Stagger. Now, if anyone who's seen Super Jail knows the Warden's little assistant, Jared, and what we would do is animate every kind of pose. He was nervously shaking, so we do one extreme than the other, and uh, in between it, straight on, and then we stagger the frame, so it would go, so you have one, two, three, four, five, we'd go one, three, two, four, five, and that way it kind of jarbles it a little bit, and you can see kind of here that he's like going it, and all I did was animate, I all I did was animate from here to here, but you can see every frame is Like that, and then the big pop. And that's sort of how you do something kind of visceral like that. And we did bones and skulls. And it was also important, you know, we were teetering on a very dark kind of thing. It's a murder mystery. We don't know what happened to our mom. It sounds violent. Uh, the school's being taken over. So we had to really make sure to make this palatable that we had to masquerade it in this very cute setting. So that's why we're kind of doing it in this cartoony way, because in all honesty, it's a very dark story, what we're, what we're telling here. So we're trying to do it in a way that's palatable. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of just gore for gore's sake. So when we do do gore, it does, it does kind of stand out a little more, I think. And that's sort of what we want to do. Now I'm going to do the same thing here, just uh, shimmer. For the old over hot topic, it's funny that um, how many girls actually played the game. At Max we Max. were they surprised, and I, I love it. I love seeing that. Um, that it's you know when we Bob and I grew up on video games, there there wasn't a whole lot of just female players in general. Everything was catered to guys, uh, video game wise. Um, so, this being my first foray into into video games, I'm like, oh, well, you know, that's who I thought the genre was for. And we made a female protagonist because um, I just like the idea of her kind of coming into her own and revenging her mom and all this stuff. It's, uh, it, it just felt a little more genuine than if a son were to do it, say. And... Uh, making the female protagonist really like uh, like the majority of people who played it uh, I would say were female and I don't know maybe it just seemed more relatable to them or what what have you but it was very interesting seeing something I didn't really um, think happened all that much in put in that context it, it was very cool I, I love it I love that idea a lot and I think Miyazaki does a great job of that too. He he doesn't he makes strong female characters that you, you like look at all his films and it's like oh everyone's a really strong female character. They're all put in a situation that's a very hardship and they all grow from it. And it's it's a it's a very empowering kind of thing that I feel like not a lot of storytellers do for some reason and I don't know why. All right, so we're going to switch it over. All right, so one pose done. And all it takes is two hours and a lot of chatter. 
So we got that. Uh, any what games are we play now? Uh, not, uh, 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 the last game I really enjoyed was Last of Us, but I just bought that remastered. Uh, you probably can't see this, but we do have a PlayStation here when we need to blow off steam. A lot of Grand Theft Auto. Um, but uh, what, what other games do we play? Cody, pro Cody is a video game collector, too. The future man here. Oh, it's Cody asking what engine. <laughs> I had to I had to learn to read. Oh, okay, cool. Um, no, but we don't. No, I I would like to play more, but to be honest, uh, when you're running a studio and we each have two kids, Bob and I, play a lot of kid games. You know, uh, it's it's not as easy as I would like to. Plus, if my wife found out I was playing video games in the studio, <laughs> that that probably wouldn't wouldn't do so hot. All right, so let's see. We got a few more minutes here. Should we just leave it up for questions, or do you guys want to see something else? Because I'll in between all this, and I'll show you that next week. Or oh, the in between this, I, I could do a few in betweens. Yeah, no, I'll do some. Let me take a swig of my medicine. All right, okay, I'll do an in between here. Let's see. So I want to antic for him to, like, I, I really want him to bounce up and drink. So I'll do an extreme antic, I think. I'll even lift up the leg. So his arc goes that way and that way. So an antic arc, I'm going to try to pull the other way. So we'll bend down and up like that. So his head will go like this. Uh, Dong wants to see your process for explosion and effects. Oh. We're not going to get that now. You want some? Oh, let's see, what's <laughs> a good explosion effect? Well, I'll sh well, the vampire ones has those... <clears throat> Where are the vampires? Has Dong not been paying attention? I tell you. Uh, I kind of do the thing where... Uh, I know everything has to dissipate because you can't have it on the screen forever, and I don't want to do crossfading. But we kind of do that in general. Yeah, just everything. in general, all debris sort of ends in nothing. So, I can frame by frame this. So, it starts with nothing. Then I do a big S curve for the smoke. Let's get rid of that dude. Now, <clears throat> this is a very stylized smoke. So this is not how smoke behaves. So I got this S curve right here. Now I want the S to keep rotating this way. So the next one you can see, we got that. And this curl keeps going up. This arc keeps going up. And this arc keeps going up. So everything has its trajectory. So this is going to keep going that way, this is going to keep going that way, this will keep going up, and this will keep going up, all while dissipating. And I do effects straight ahead. Um, I learned to do effects straight ahead at Augum Look Studio. I, I, uh, anyone who knows Augum Look Studios and me, I, I, I learned everything I know in animation from them. They're, they're a fantastic studio to learn traditional stuff and apply it in a real studio setting where you have to be efficient and stuff. So you do all these things straight ahead now each time it gets a little smaller but you can see you can watch this one right here keep going 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 and you can see the curve right here keep going. Can you see my uh, icon? Not really? Oh no. Oh, okay. Oh. No, no. Okay so you can see this keep going this way. So if you kind of see them all, now this is, it's hard to see with all the framework, but you can see it kind of eases out, it eases out this way, the S curve keeps going this way, oh my gosh. That's what happens when you snap the objects. Okay. Um, the S curve keeps going that way. And this smoke keeps going that way. So it's all sort of this organic snake-like movement. 
Now that's for smoke. Explosions, I just go to town. I'll make a, something small. And um, I'll show you guys an explosion. Back to coin. Everything circles back to coin. Okay, coin series. Poses. I can never find anything from the concept of animation. Do we have a library? Oh, yeah, we do have the library. Don't pull sheet. Oh, darn. So, uh, you can see this explosion here. So, that. I probably can't even see it that good. But, um,. This is just a, it's just a debris factory. You, we made a bunch of smoke. We made tiny little segments here. So you see everything kind of spins and dissipates. And then we'll just kind of collect that and stagger them. So it looks like, it, it, it looks like more is happening than it isn't, but this is really a byproduct. Five or six symbols. And the, actually the hardest one being the one we kind of spent the most time on was the circle explosion as we dubbed it which is kind of right here and that's the one we just sort of did traditionally and then just add a bunch of debris to it uh i know and you know this is sort of another video game setting coin was but like a lot of explosions and smoke in actual like say an anime cartoon they don't you know, they'll cut the scene before the smoke disappears, so they'll just ease out. G giant ease outs. Like, it'll just be... I mean, I've seen it shot on 7s, I've she seen it shot on 12s, and all that stuff, too. But they'll just keep easing out and easing out and stuff. So, let's see. We'll have his foot go up here. That foot go up here. The coffee can go out here. So when I try to do my poses, you know, you try to kind of balance the character. So, um, you know, this arm, this leg goes up, this arm goes up for balance. This S curve goes into that. Uh, an antic, you want him to, you, you know, if he starts up, you want him to go down, vice versa. So he'll drink like that, and then. We'll do another antic and maybe his head will go down like for this one. This will be his torso. Again, they arm up. And we'll keep, yeah, the arm will keep go up that way. And this is sort of how I do my line of actions too. And so you can kind of see where it's going. And then I'll do, you know, I love like smear frames and stuff like that so we can actually bend the head this way when it needs to go the coffee can kind of stay down the, I'll keep the coffee here so we have a sense of drag and then so we got that and then we'll probably have to do a settle since it's such a drastic move but that that's just an extreme settle Actually, I'm going to lower the head here because I think that'll be better, too. So we'll lower it, too. So it's a real kind of S-curve like that. And we could probably even speed it up. Hmm. Probably speed that up, too. And... You know, when I get to this one, we're going to do like a real fun kind of cartoony gulp where, you know, we'll have the lips go in, the jaw go down, like a big swallow and his torso go in. And then out and then in. So we'll have like this whoop, whoop kind of feeling here. And then you can kind of see where, and I'll probably get two gulps in before I pull this shenanigans.
and then we'll just shoot right back on there. And this one could be, I, 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 not everything has to be like this giant cartoony thing, so I'll probably play the last move a little more subtle. So it'll just, you know, just be sort of straight in between these and is, uh, we'll do a blank or something like that. But you don't want to go, not everything can be a Johnny Bravo smear frame going nuts. It can be, but then it's, 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 the, it's like, Becky has these attacks that are very smear frame, and you kind of want to, you, you don't want to overdo anything, so then we'll go like that, you know, something to that degree. And that's sort of where, oh, 152. I'm missing, <laughs> yeah, I, I miss those cartoons. I just miss cartoons, I think. I haven't seen one worth uh, much in, in uh, probably just an old bitter man, though. That's okay. We watch cartoons, too, though. So, um, so I think that's a good enough place to wrap up. I'm going to clean up these poses, and we'll start next Friday with more, unless you guys have more questions or suggestions or... Any other monster? We got bats. We got rats. Got so vampires. Oh, so this is the dad. Asking if it's oh the yes, this is this is Becky's dad. I'm sorry uh, if that wasn't clear. No, Becky. Uh, we start off in her house as the story unfolds, and this is sort of your first introduction to the dad, as he's probably going to be serving you breakfast or something like that. No, maybe next week we'll show some backgrounds or something. Yeah, I want to show Bob's background techniques too. Maybe he'll hop on next week because uh, he's been playing with textures and everything looks super painterly, but it's done in flash. He's he's mastered this kind of texture technique and it's all vector. It's beautiful. I'm wishing nothing but good vibes. Hey, yeah, we need that. We need good vibes. What is Lion Flex? Oh, oh, Lion. <laughs> uh, any other questions, anyone? Just wish Lion Flex to get it done. Yeah, and those who don't follow Lionflex, he, he does really have a good game coming your guy's way, and and I think he's on the he has it on the ropes. How to officially approve cartoon figures? Uh, I guess just drawing every day always helped me uh, get, you know, uh, figuring out cartoon draw drawings. I know uh, a lot of people do, um, like. Um, what's it called, like, uh, figure studies and stuff, they do a lot of that stuff, but I just watch a lot of acting and stuff, uh, whether it be on TV and stuff, um, movies are always great inspiration, but, uh, soon it becomes second nature, really. Oh, work in Brazil, raising the indie game flag, <laughs> oh, cool, oh, that's awesome, uh, it, no, it, it's, the internet has made things a lot easier on us. We can finally get our work out there with the proper outlet, so I'm glad to see it's traveling that far. For sure. What other conversations did I miss? Like a hundred? No, that no, was no, no, that was pretty good. All right. Well, is this a good enough time? Yeah, I think so. And this year. I think we'll try to do this again next Yeah, week. next Friday at 2. Yeah. Tell your friends. Uh, we're going to do it. We'll be tweeting. If you don't follow us on Twitter or Instagram, you can follow us all there at Exit73. Uh, big thanks to Cody Greenheld, Andrew Tavis, Greg Lane, Bob and I. Uh, we thank you guys for joining us. This is our first Twitch. We'll iron some of this stuff out. But mostly we'll be just drinking and drawing. <laughs> so until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you. Thanks.